This video will show you how to use a method called tic-tac-toe to factor a polynomial like this. If there's no coefficient here, you already know how to factor that. That's just simply what two numbers multiply to give you 10 that add to give you 19. But now that we have a coefficient in front of x squared that is not the greatest common factor, the process becomes more difficult. And this tic-tac-toe method is going to be a nice way to organize the work that you have to do. Before we start factoring, let's take a look at our sign rules. Now, this is just the sign rule for if the last sign is positive, and that's all this video will cover. I'll do another video that covers the last sign being negative. So if the last sign is positive, the signs in the parentheses are the same as whatever the middle sign is. So in this case, the last sign is positive. I look over here, my middle sign is positive, and that's why both of those signs are positive. Example right here, last sign was positive. The middle is positive, therefore both signs are positive. And this is one of those simple ones. What two numbers multiply to give you 6 and add to give you 5? has to be 2 and 3. In this case, this last sign is positive, which tells me my signs will be the same, and they will be the same as whatever that sign is. That's why both signs in the parentheses are negative. Example down here, that's a positive 12. This middle sign is negative, therefore both of these are negative. Before we do the tic-tac-toe method, let's look at the old way that you probably learned before. This trinomial came from multiplying two binomials together, so the whole idea of factoring is to find those two binomials. The 2x squared had to be found by multiplying two variables together. The only way to get that 2x squared is to multiply a 2x times an x. Because the last sign is positive and the middle sign is positive, that tells me that both of these signs in the parentheses are positive. Look now at the last term. The only thing that multiplies to give you 3 is a 1 times 3. But we don't know, is it a 1 here and a 3 here, or vice versa? And the only way in this trial and error method we're going to find out what it is, is to check our inside product and our outside product. If we multiply 1 times x, we get 1x. 3 times 2x, gives us 6x. If you add 1x and 6x together, you get 7x, which is not what I want in the middle. That says I've placed the 1 and the 3 in the wrong place. So let's get those out of the way and swap our 3 and 1 around. Now do the check. 3 times x is 3x. 2x times 1 is 2x. When you add those together, you do get the 5x. So that's, those, those are your steps for doing the trial and error method. And there's nothing wrong with that method if you understand it. Where students often go wrong is in the check. Either they do something wrong with the check or they just don't bother to check, which means sometimes they get these back numbers in the right place and sometimes they don't. So here's the tic-tac-toe method with the same problem. It's called tic-tac-toe for the obvious reason of the tic-tac-toe grid. I have already filled the problem into the top row, but notice the 3, which was the last number, is now in the middle position. The 5x is in the last position. The x term will always occupy the third column because this column is going to be our check column. There is still some trial and error here. We're still trying to find out things that multiply to give us 2x squared and multiply to give us 3. So what multiplies to give us 2x squared is 2x times x. That's our only choice. Before we get this 3 set up, let's take a look at the signs. The last sign is positive. The middle sign is positive. That tells me that the signs for both of these are positive. Now look at the 3. The only thing that multiplies to give you 3 is 3 and 1. I still have the same decision to make. Is it a 3 here and a 1 here or vice versa? Well, I'm going to leave them there and show you the check. Go back one second. 2x times x is what gave us the 2x squared. The 3 times the 1 is what gave us the 3. We're also going to multiply on the horizontal. This is our checking step. 2x times 3 gives us 6x. x times 1 gives us 1x. So everything in this grid was found by multiplying. These multiplied to give you 2x squared. These multiplied to give you 3. Multiply across. 2x times 3 gives us 6x. x times 1 gives us 1x. So all of the grid is filled in using multiplication. The only place in the grid where we think about adding is right there. Take those numbers, 6x plus 1x is 7x. We want that value here to equal that 5x at the top of the column. It doesn't equal 5x. That says we've placed the 3 and the 1 in the wrong places. So let's erase that and let's get rid of those. 
Now swap around the 1 and the 3. Put the 1 here and the 3 there. Now let's multiply across. 2x times 1 is 2x. x times 3 is 3x. Take those two values, add those together, and we do get the 5x that we want. So that says, yep, we have placed them in the correct positions. When you group these, you're going to group them on the diagonal. 2x plus 3, x plus 1. That's how these get factored together. So our answer is 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. It's very similar to the trial and error. It's still a matter of you've got to try something, try something else if it doesn't work. But this grid has the checking built in for you. That's its benefit. Let's look at another one from scratch. I've already filled in the top row. I put the 2 there and the 7x there. I still have to think about what multiplies to give me 3x squared. The only thing that works is 3x times x. It wouldn't matter where I put these. I could have these swapped around. That doesn't matter. Just that 3x times x gives me 3x squared. Look at your signs. Those are both positive. So I know I'm going to have positive in both of these positions. What multiplies to give you 2 is a 2 times a 1. So I'll place the 2 here and place the 1 there. I don't know if that's going to work until I check across. 3x times 2 is 6x, 1 times x is x, or if you prefer, if it helps you any, you can write out 1x here. 6x plus 1x is 7x. That says on our first try we put these in the right place. If it didn't work, we'd have to swap out the 2 and the 1. But we got it on the first try, so group these on the diagonals. 3x plus 1 will be in one parenthesis and x plus 2 will be in the other parenthesis. So there's your answer. It doesn't matter which parenthesis goes first. I could have had the x plus 2 over here on the left followed by the 3x plus 1. What does matter is that the 3 and the 1 are together and that the 1x and the 2 are together. Already set up for us, I put the 2 in the middle, the negative 5x there. What multiplies to give me 3x squared is just 3x and x. But sign-wise, this is different than the last two. The last sign is positive, which tells me the signs are the same. But since that's negative, I know that the two signs are both negative. It is crucial that you get your signs correct, because if your signs are wrong, these are never going to work out for you. All right, what multiplies to give us two? There's only one choice. I could put a two here and a one here. Let's check it out and see if it works for us. 3x times negative two is a negative 6x. Negative 1 times x is a negative 1x. If I put negative 6x and negative 1x, that gives me negative 7x. That says I didn't place the 2 and the 1 in the proper position. So let's erase the check and let's swap these around. The 1's going here, the 2's going there, and let's check now. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Do we get negative 5x when we put negative 3x and negative 2x together? Yes, that says now we've got them in the right place. So group them up on the diagonal, 3x minus 2 with the x minus 1.